might just speak. Can you hear me at the back if I put this away? Okay, great. Um, it feels like I want to sing. That would not be a good look, <laughs> as my daughter keeps telling me. Um, so, um, look, can I firstly acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we're meeting on today, um, the Wajuk people of the Noongar Nation, and I'd like to pass my respects onto their elders past and present. Um, what a wonderful welcome to country, Sean. Um, they are always wonderful, they're always inspiring. I cannot, I can't follow you with a better uh, talk to that welcome to country. I was joking with Sean beforehand to say, well, maybe, actually, he, he thought I was running a bit late, so um, maybe he could have done this talk. I think it would have probably been better. He could have sung it. So, um, <laughs> but a, one, a wonderful, uh, I won't, but a wonderful welcome to country. Thank you, Sean, again. So, thank you. Um, so, it's, in 20 minutes, I thought about this, and um, I, I've covered a, um, just a few things I, I would like to cover, but I'm really going to talk um, probably off the hip um, uh, rather than sort of formally, but I've got a couple of slides to guide us. Um, when I came into the job, and I will say that um, whether it's one year, two years, three years, four years in, um, there are three things, three general things that drive me, and two thing, and, and two of the board chairs, and I'll talk about the boards in a minute when they came in and said, what are our three priorities? I said, number one, safety, quality, experience, and value for patients. Number two, clinical performance. And number three, financial performance. Now, there's lots of other stuff that we do in health. There is lots of other stuff that we do in health. We'll talk a little bit about um, some, of the, um, some of the infrastructures, and of course that, that doesn't bring into everything that we do in health. But those three things, if we don't get them right, and if we don't continually have a cycle of improvement and innovation, we will struggle. So those are the three things, and number one is safety and quality, and it's not just safety and quality, it is also value. It is also value for patients, and it is the patient experience, and I'll come to that in a minute. So. Um, Pip, um, when, you, uh, when you say, look, thank you for coming, uh, this is what we're here for. I mean, if I actually didn't come to this and I went to something else, now sometimes I do have other priorities, um, this is actually about what we're here. We are here for the patient experience. We are here, everybody from health in this room, every person who treats patients in WA, whether the public or the private sector, are here to make that patient experience better. Um, and we have all, we have all um, been touched uh, by, uh, by our relatives, by family, by even ourselves, um, accessing the health system. And I'm not just talking about the public health system. So that is number one priority, and I will say it again and again. Um, Pips mentioned the changes, and I'm not going um, I'm, I'm to focus on this, but it is important and it is quite dry. But this was not just done to do something, oh, we need to do something different. This was wholesale governance reform. This was not tweaking at the edges. This was very much led, started by my predecessor. Um, I knew it would be a significant um, implementation task for me and the team. Um, and this is really around about four, four major, m major parts to the governance health reform. A new health services bill is now in place and nearly been in place for a year. So we have new legislations. That's not tinkering at the edges. It's not saying, let's just deal with the 1927 Act. This is a new Health Services Act, which is being used. So it's not just sits out there, it's an act that sits in Parliament, it's being used. And it's being used, you would have heard, and I can, I'm sure you, you, you would have heard today, in relation to a Path West um, inquiry that will, will happen, there is a second one happening, under the new provisions of this act. Now that's one thing I can mention today, but there's other areas where this is actually happening as well. So we have a new framework. We are trying to put as many functions out there in the health services and reduce the department's footprint. But the department have to build skills into what it does and it should do well. Um, the health service providers are legally accountable statutory authorities. And the system manager, that is the Department of Health. And that, should, that has key roles in stewardship, leadership and strategic planning. But there's no point doing that unless we have benefits. And the benefits are, to me, it's very simple. I've been in the system for a long time, uh, but really been in leadership roles for the last 10 years. Um, you cannot run everything, and some of you in this room would agree with me, you cannot run everything from 189 Royal Street. And anybody is kidding if they think they can. 
you need to be more locally accountable. You need to be in touch with your local communities, your local population, your local individual patients. So it is about improved accountability, but in, if I can use the word in, in, improved proximity from those who provide the care to people on the ground. It is more responsive, but it is local, it's more flexible, and it is more innovative. There is greater transparency. And can I tell you, in my view, um, the boards are working. It has brought much better transparency. There is a bit of healthy competition. I've had five boards tell me on a regular basis they're the best board. And they're the best board because they're doing this, and they've got the best health service because they're doing this. And that sort of healthy competition, it's not divisive, but it is healthy to say we're doing this in this area. Uh, and we have, we have seen some real innovations that have come through. We've got one health service which has said, we want to look at what we're doing that is of no value. Sorry, we would like me to sing. Okay, we would, we want to do, we want to look at, we want to look at what is low value. We, we actually want to stop doing things that there is no benefit to patients. And there is a project underway to look at those very low value um, health, um, health interventions in one board that will go to others. And we are beginning, we, as we should, we should question always what we do and how we do it and when we do it. Um, so that greater transparency, um, it is not just about safety and quality, it's also about value. And ultimately, uh, and ultimately you'll hear uh, a bit more from me about sustainable health system. So what are the enduring priorities for us? I've talked about the patient experience a little bit. I've talked about safety and quality, clinical performance and financial performance and sustainability. Nobody, nobody could deny the situation that we're in in WA and health consumes 30% of the budget. So we actually have to have, it has to be, in my view, that four-legged stool, sorry, three-legged stool, clinical performance, financial performance, safety, quality and experience. We can't do this and we cannot grow the budget like we've been growing. Um, we certainly have brought it back in the last two years. We've halved expenditure growth but we have to be sustainable. So it's not just about reducing costs, it's actually doing the things that value the most and get us the best outcome and get individuals and community the best outcomes. And it's not just about hospitals. Um, we, have got, we have got clear visions and objectives for health service providers and the Department of Health. We are one system. So when the minister, the new minister came in and said, how is the system performing in this area, in safety and quality? How is the, how is the system performing? He or she, is, he will look at that system. And yes, then we'll look into individual areas, individual health service providers. And we want health service providers where there is a bit of competitive tension, where they are highly performing, they're responsible, they're accountable, they're innovative. Um, and what should we do? And I think, uh, you know, if you look at any change like this, we're not trailblazers in this. Every other state except for South Australia and the Northern Territory um, and ACT have gone to this model. Victoria have been with this model for a while and New South Wales and Queensland recently. And I, I did a lot of um, reading and research to say, is this the best model going forward? And it is the best model if we can get the department to be a robust system manager, to steward, to a lead to assure, to regulate, those are some of the roles. To, pl to plan strategically, to get out of the weeds until we actually need to get into the weeds. Making sure that there is no crossover or no duplication between the health service providers and also the system manager. And in the last year, we have got more clarity. There is more to go, we will always learn. We will always learn from this journey. Um, one, of the, um, one of the enduring sort of things I want to talk about just very briefly is safety and quality. Um, we always knew there's been a focus on safety and quality and within that I bring experience and of value and patient experience. But ostensibly in safety and quality in the system, we've always said, I think if I asked any health person in this room, they would say, yes, it's my, one of my top two, if not my top priority. But um, when, we went through this pro uh, when we went through these huge governance changes, I wanted to be sure that we had a robust system going forward. It's all very well to be reactive. It's all very well to say, we've got a problem, what do we need to fix? Well, how do we need to fix it? Health actually is like that and has to be like that sometimes. 
But if you look at the, um, the recent Victorian uh, Duckett review done by Stephen Duckett into those tragic deaths in a small health service in Victoria, if you look at what's happened in New South Wales with oncology, um, and they had health service boards and they also had Department of Health as a system manager. We reviewed the outcomes of those and we've actually reviewed where we need to improve and where we need to act and where we don't. But also I wanted us to ask ourselves, um, I'll have we, I don't want to be in that situation in two years. I don't want to be standing here and saying, I wish we had done a review. I wish we'd looked at ourselves and said, how can we do better? And so with this new governance model, we did ask a very experienced uh, clinician from the UK to come in and help us do a very quick review, which is underway at the moment, saying, how do we not just have a system that is um, that I can tell you what a KPI says, and that yes, we're doing okay with falls, but how we can improve, how we can innovate, how we can actually get out of health service provider space and allow them to innovate, how we as a system manager as a Department of Health can do our thing and they can do theirs. It has been a fascinating journey so far. Uh, this, uh, and it's not just down to Hugo, but he impressed me, he's worked in the UK, um, as a clinician, he's a physician, he's also worked as a medical director, he's worked in the NHS Department of Health, and he has worked, he was the, a doctor who went into mid-staffs, you would have heard, all of you would have heard about the mid-staffs um, um, disaster over in the UK, and he went in very soon after that um, to mid-staffs. And he has actually, actually helped us in, in determining what are the roles and responsibilities of the department and what are they for the health service providers. Um, and, we, and we will very likely make that public as it's been to the Minister. This is not, it's an internal review, it's not one of those ones that goes on for 12 to 18 months, but it is to position ourselves well for the future. Um, it is not just, I just didn't want to sit there and say, yeah, I know we have a good culture, but how can we have an outstanding culture? Um, and I think that if we can learn from this, it means that everything will flow from that in relation to safety and quality and patient experience. So if I look at some of the other um, priorities going forward, and to talk to you in 20 minutes about the health system um, is quite hard. Um, so our election commitments, we have a new government. We have a new government, we have a new minister, the Minister for Health and for Minister for Mental Health. And I have not mentioned all the election commitments here, but I've picked a few. Because they are all about patient experience. And number one is patient opinion. I now I have for the last year subscribed to patient opinion. Um, I see everything that goes through to patient opinion that the health services allow me to see, which is most of the stuff, which I, I usually, I don't, when I ask, I usually don't say no. Um, so I've actually, and it is fascinating, I've found it much more usable, much more tangible on a regular basis, because it comes through on the day, um, you see the response, you see how the health services are responding. Yes, we get trends from KPIs, yes, we, we also look at our SAC 1 events, we look at those tragic events that occur and how we can improve. We now know that the Commonwealth are beginning to fund states, and it will happen in July the 1st, for safety and quality outcomes. They will not fund sentinel events, and nor should they. Why would you fund a sentinel event? Number two, they will do shadow pricing for hospital-acquired complications for a year, and there is work being done on readmissions. So they're beginning to say, we're not funding you for poor outcomes in the hospital environment. That will obviously extend. But what the great thing about patient opinion is, you see it raw. You actually see it raw from patients. So you see, I had a great experience, and I'd like to, to thank that nurse at Esperance Hospital for going the extra mile. Or, I had a poor experience. And actually, when you read them, as I've said many times, it's not necessarily about the clinical care. Mm. It's not about the care at basically in theatres. Mm. It's sometimes about the care that happened in the corridor, that actually happened, it's to, do with the, it's to do with the very important support services. But what I think is so good about patient opinion, it is raw, and it allows the health service providers to put a face, so they get, so patients get a response, and they usually get a friendly face to say, this is who I am, take your complaint, or your compliment seriously, and this is what we will do about it. So, um, we are very hopeful that patient opinion will go right across the state. We are not trying to uh, go with another, um, uh, uh, with another provider because um, you know, we would then have um, a platform for the whole state. 
Many hotels and urgent care clinics have been announced by the government, and these are, or if you think about them, they can do a number of things. Many hotels do a number of things. They can be recuperative, uh, and they can also, but they can also be to provide accommodation for country patients, and we're working through some of the models. Um, and it's working in other states. I did actually come out of a hotel in Melbourne the other day, and I came out of the hotel, and I was very impressed when I went downstairs, because on the other side of the lifts, there was a couple of people dressed as nurses. Well, I think they were nurses. And I said, oh, there's a many hotel up there. And I thought to myself, well, maybe uh, there was something else. There was a fancy dress party going on. And I didn't actually <laughs> realise that. Or maybe something else was going on. But it was. They actually said, that they, they, have, they actually lease, they lease part of that hotel to provide those additional services to patients when they are discharged from hospitals. So there are a number of models. Urgent care clinics. That is about, it is, Yes, it's about taking pressure off emergency departments, but it is ultimately about patient experience. Meet and greet services for country patients coming to Perth. Uh, preventative programs, we've talked a bit about hospitals. There is much more focus and needs to be on prevention. We have led the way recently, and I'm touching on it now, on the meningococcal vaccine. WA basically had enough and said, we have enough evidence here to suggest that meningococ meningococcal W is a, a major issue here. We normally vaccination campaigns get led by the Commonwealth. WA is going to lead the way, and we did that late last year, and we are starting, I think, this week in term two in the school program about uh, giving 15 to 19 year olds meningococcal A, C, W, and Y vaccine to prevent, to get the best herd immunity we can and prevent that devastating disease. So, you know, there are these, we should not also forget about prevention. There are lots of infrastructure commitments, such as June Bluff and Country commitments, I won't go into it, and there is also the Sustainable Health Review. And the Sustainable Health Review, we are working with the Minister at the moment, working that up. It was an election commitment. It really looked back to the Reid Review in 2003-04 to saying, health has, we have major challenges. We have an ageing population, we have chronic disease, we have more uh, uh, rely, reliance on hospitals, less reliance on GPs. Um, in this state, we also have um, a less amount of aged care facilities, so very high cost service in our tertiary hospitals. So, what is going to be sustainable for the future? The government have announced they will do this, and it will be a, a significant platform for government and for me, for me as well, because all that has led, as I said, three things safety, quality, financial performance, clinical performance. It's not just about financial performance, it's about sustainability. Other system priorities, I've mentioned the safety and quality project. A sustainable health review, in my view, will lead into a 10-year state plan. That 10-year state plan um, has to be not just about shiny hospitals. It has not just to be, it actually has to be where are our gaps and where should we invest and where should we divest. Uh, the public health bill implementation is underway and also continue our journey on ICT reform strategy and delivery. Uh, we are able, we've been able to roll out a number of ICT initiatives such as WebPAS will be there for the whole state, which is our patient administration system, one patient administration system internally because we've had more prudent financial management. A new quad centre um, in, uh, in Shenton Park and actually, again, better patient experience because there will be a model of care that is delivered in the community and not at what is an old hospital. It will provide services but not necessarily all of that hospital. I would like to get the Perth Children's Hospital open and commissioned. Um, and uh, also, Correctives Health. That's another priority for myself. We don't run Correctives Health, but we have three Director Generals and um, Ministers who are committed to looking at Correctives Health and how we can actually do that better to some of our most disadvantaged uh, population. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of a journey um, uh, of, of health in a nutshell. Um, I've probably forgotten something um, and I'll be, uh, I'll be called up on it in the end. But it is a dynamic environment. But we are here for one thing. We're here for the patient, whether they be the individual, we're here for the local community, and we're also here for the general WA population. Uh, we need to have as much focus, or if we can, more focus on prevention subacute and step down than we do on tertiary than we do on tertiary going forward. I think whilst it's a complex system, there is a lot going on, uh, the governance reforms have started that journey and we are well on the way. There is lots more to improve, uh, but I wish you well in your deliberations. You are in the right room. You are in the right room. You're at the right conference. 
because this is why we should all be here. Thank you very much.